we know uh, romeo and juliet these are stories that everybody know honestly to be very blunt i was like very clear that my vision of this would be very different from the original i think old bollywood has just collapsed uh, the older actors are getting you know they're sort of getting phased out the younger lot is very interested and excited about world cinema ashim welcome to india today uh, this is truly exciting Hi. because there is lots to chat Uh, and pick on your brain and deep dive into that and understand, uh, you know, what was class all about the experience? Uh, how did you get into it? How the response be? Let's begin with the response. Uh, now that the baby is out in the world and for everyone to watch, uh, what has been perhaps the most cheekiest message or one that has caught your attention? Because your phone must be buzzing. Is there is there anything particular that has come your way that has caught your attention? I'm just shocked at the kind of people that have watched it and loved it. I mean, I think you know, just from like my broker to like you know, uh, like like the Hindi teacher in my uh, in my my kid's school. You know, like people that I'm a bit scandalized that they watched it. To be honest, you know, I'm like, okay, these guys are all uh, you know really excited, and they've watched it multiple times. Of course, lots of younger people have loved it. I mean, that I'm I'm not so surprised by, but it was it's the it's the It's the older people and it's the randomness of the demographic that's been quite exciting. You know, just like really people that I would not expect to have gotten into a show like that. It's pretty intense. So um, it's been great actually that that response. Yeah, you never know what's going to hit you and who's going to respond and how. Uh, that sort of takes me back to Elite, and I remember watching it back in the day. And then everybody on WhatsApp yeah. was, you know, talking about it. Have you watched it? And it's so racy. and it's so mm. hg and mm. obviously very graphic uh, then there was this whole mm. conversation that oh you know india mein to ye ho nahi payega because on social media there was this whole mm. conversation if it was remade people were making fictional stories about mm. if they had to cast who all of that happened right mm. and then actually somebody goes and decides ki hey let's let's you know try and see how it works if we do adapt it and do pitch it in india what was that thought process like in terms of how far can we go where do we push the envelope and where do we draw the line uh, what was that conversation like So you know, I mean, actually, I had never. Ironically, I think I must have been the only person in the world who hadn't seen it. Um, and you know, I was actually always interested to do something about rebellious teenagers. I, it wasn't really uh, elite per se. It just it, I had ideas about a film that I wanted to do, and then I was offered uh, elite as a as an adaptation. You know, um, I was told, "Why don't you take a look at it?" And I started watching it, and I said, "Okay, this is racy, but it's very. It's not my style in terms of how it's made. It's it's kind of you know like a telenovela a bit." um and i thought okay this has a lot of nudity it's got a lot of it's it's pretty it's pretty sauced out considering it's you know these young kids going uh, going nuts here um but what i found interesting about it was the was the plot lines you know the plot lines suddenly these interconnecting kids uh, of you know the sort of haves and have nots the rich and poor kids this kind of conflict that actually was more exciting to me honestly than just the nudity and all of the you know the racy stuff because there was also stuff like euphoria and all coming out at the same time or a little bit after there was a lot of young adult teen stuff so there was this kind of racy teen drama thing a kind of a moment so that stuff obviously you know was i was like okay they're really pushing the envelope here but i also understood from a from a subscriber base point of view that you would you know you could do that but what i really liked about the show was this 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 interaction between all these characters how they all sort of fit together in this larger puzzle you know and also just this the the class thing you know i thought if i had to make this i would take away all the telenovela style and i would make it really cinematic i would make it really atmospheric really moody and i would get really into the psychology of these characters you know like why they do what they do you can keep the yeah. plot line just like it is but i never felt like i understood why a lot of those things were happening in the original i i love i love the raciness of it but it almost felt like arbitrary you know that they're making these choices so i thought that would be really cool to do to get into the psychology of get into their heads a little bit you know right and you know you also made a very interesting point about creating that uh, atmosphere creating that mahal yeah. because right from the background score to what they are wearing yeah. to the way yeah. the camera moves with them uh, small yeah. small things like these i think take you deep inside the the characters it from the periphery looks very glossy but deep down inside yeah. when you actually see what they are going through that's i think where the story yeah. sort of picks up and that's what what keeps you engaged Talk to me a bit about I, finding these kids, yeah. yeah, because they're also brilliant. Yeah, that must have been a task, yeah. no, to kind of get the right kids for the right yeah. parts. 
Yeah, actually, the thing is that I honestly, to be very blunt, I was like very clear that my vision of this would be very different from the original. And I was like, okay, by keeping the plot points, how can we just change the telling? And one of the things that you have to do to change the telling is to to not use known faces, because what happens is if you use known faces, then they come with the baggage of other things they've done. So it was a, a kind of mandate for me that when we do this, I want a completely new world we've never seen on Indian screens. Like from the, you know, like you said, from the atmosphere to the costumes, to the kind of kids you see, and to obviously the actors themselves, I want something that you've never seen. So when you enter as an audience, you you have no reference point. You just have to submit to it and you're in it, you know? So it was very critical that I got kids that were, you know, that we found kids that, that we had never seen before. And these kids are all pretty much handpicked by me. You know, they're like, like kids that were off the internet. We found a lot of them on Instagram. Um, you know, we had uh, multiple casting directors working on it. Uh, I was extremely difficult in the casting process. I just refused a lot of people. I fought a lot with everyone, including, you know, um, you know, our co-producers, everyone just saying that I don't want star kids. I don't want famous kids. I don't want people who are already well-known. I just need people who are, in a way, the stars of tomorrow, you know, without saying that, but kids that have presence that are really cool, that just, just nail the characters, you know, they just become those characters. And a lot of these kids come from a similar space. They're all new characters like this in real life. You know, they all knew wild rich kids in real life. They all knew a lot of, a lot of the characters, a lot of the actors are from Delhi. So yeah, I mean, that was sort of the, yeah. the sort of. Process. But tell me, is, doesn't it get easier for the studio or the or the platform or in general for the publicity marketing when you have familiar faces? I mean, there are so many star kids waiting to be launched. That must have also been a conversation and who perhaps could have uh, also been able to do these parts. But like you said, it would have taken away that factor which you thought was very important. Was, was that a conversation yeah. that went back and forth? <laughs> that's always a conversation with my work i think i think i'm known to be kind of a difficult director so i have to say that netflix was very patient with me like when i when i came to the project i said look you know i'm going to do it my way so if that's going to be an issue then you know let's let's not do it but if i'm doing it my way i'm really committed to the vision that i have for this and i think they backed me all the way you know i would start you know of course initially they were like you know we should have more known faces and that but as i started bringing the kids in and i said no but imagine this guy as sharan imagine this guy as veer you know and he doesn't have to be guzman he doesn't have to be the spanish guy who's like the hunky guy he can be more complex he can be you know the rich kid who's a bit moody who's wanting to be alpha male but can't be alpha male and you can make it more interesting and i think somewhere they kind of bought bought that and said you know i think this could be interesting so you know, I think there was a lot of support from Netflix, honestly. And I think a lot of studios now, you know, are going to be more open to this kind of stuff. But in the past, it was much harder. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's right. I, I saw a very interesting meme the other day where there was uh, Zoya's Archie's on one side and then there was class on the other side, which sort of also shows that, you know, you can have two different set of people working in two different styles because Archie's again is about launching a bunch of kids who are familiar faces yeah. and known faces. And then again, class is again, a bunch of new guys. Yeah. Talk to me a bit about uh, setting the show in Delhi, which obviously sort of reflects the gap between the haves and the have nots. Uh, yeah. I'm a Bombay kid and I've always been a Bombay kid. And even today when I go to Delhi, it overwhelms me when I see these huge houses and everybody throwing right. names like, oh, you know who right. I am. Was, did that just make the story more easier and make the characters more relatable? Because we've all been through that. Yeah. So, I mean, Delhi was the first thing that came into my mind when I th thought of adapting it. You know, I started adapting it. I was watching the show. I was watching it with my partner, uh, producer Niharika Singh, who was, who was with me. We we're looking at it together and I said, damn, this looks like it's written for Delhi. Yeah? It should be in Delhi, you know, and we just started talking about it. And the first thing I just felt like I can imagine this in Delhi right now. And it, it would be absolutely real. So it's funny when people go, is this relevant? It doesn't feel like this happens in India. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Haven't you ever had this experience? Because the farmhouse culture in Delhi is basically written for this show. You know, I mean, massive, massive tracts of land and it's a bubble basically. So, you know, like we, we are in Bombay, if you're a millionaire, a billionaire in Bombay, you have no choice, but you have to drive through that slum in the morning, whether you like it or not. You can't escape, you can't create bubbles. We're just on top of each other in the city, but Delhi has... You don't have to deal with people from the other side of the tracks. And that goes that goes also for the poor. They don't have to really interact either. They have their, their own ghettos, whether it's, you know, whichever part of Delhi. So everybody's very segregated and it, and it made for a lot of conflict, obviously, because if someone comes in from another space, in, immediately you're going to have, 
drama. You're going to have struggle, you know. Right. Um, how did these kids break the ice? Because when you do these intimate scenes, right, and there is, there is yeah. a lot of pushing the yeah. envelope in that sense, uh, very raw and it feels very organic and very intrinsic to where the story oh. is going. It doesn't feel, uh, I mean, this is just as a viewer, it doesn't feel like, I don't know if there was an intimacy director on set because that's a new norm. A lot of directors are using that. But how did you yeah. tackle those moments yeah. which had to be very important in the, in the show? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm actually very comfortable with the idea of sexuality on screen. My first film, Miss Lovely, was about two 1980s porn directors. You know, I've started with the idea that we really should be exploring more of this stuff and in a more organic way, not in a voyeuristic, exploitative way, but in a very everyday way, you know. So I think that a lot of the the kids already knew my work. They already knew that there was going to be a, quite a lot of sort of sexuality. But I was very keen and I have to be very blunt about this. This wasn't anybody else's decision other than mine to not have nudity. I said, you know, there was something voyeuristic about the original for me, which I thought is not required because these are like high school kids. And I thought, you know, there's a way we can do this without it becoming like something that everyone's gawking at. And in India, you have a bit of a, it can become complicated. You know, it can just become people skipping through the narrative just to watch those scenes. And I was very clear that I don't want that kind of show. I was like, no, if you want to get into the sexuality, then you've got to get into the characters, you've got to get into the plot. And I think because of that, the actors had a lot of trust in the way that I wanted to make it. You know, I said, look, there's, there is going to be this, but this is how we're planning to do it. So. To answer your question, I think there was a lot of trust with the kids and also with the way I wanted to make it. We did also have uh, Asta Khanna, who was an intimacy coordinator, who helped with breaking the ice between the kids, uh, making sure they were prepped, making sure the set was very safe. There was, you know, there were no people standing around. It was a closed set. Um, and even more important, I think these kids all ended up becoming friends. You know, by the time they were shooting these scenes together, they were all buddies. They, we had shot for 180 days during the pandemic. We were trapped together all this, in Delhi for two and a half years making this. So everybody was close um, and they were buddies and they were, you know, they were funny about things. And if someone was uncomfortable, my environment, the sets that I would direct on are always uncomfortable. Let's pause. Let's talk about it. Let's change the staging, you know. So I think that environment helps a lot. Right. And, you know, you mentioned another show in this conversation, which is Euphoria. A lot of people in India yeah. have watched that show. It speaks about drugs, mental health issues, uh, yeah. just that teenage yeah. angst. Now the Indian audience yeah. in that market has also watched Euphoria. We all know who is Zendaya and all of her work. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when yeah, you bring yeah. something like a class to India and, and the audience starts watching that, was that also a challenge for you given the fact that anybody in the 18 to say 25 age bracket today does have access to a lot of international content, will end up watching streaming stuff, uh, which perhaps has not come to India yeah. yet or has already been yeah. made in a different language. How did you tackle that part? I don't want a direct comparison at the same time, I want it to be a refreshing, like a fresh experience. I think that's what stands out for mm. me. Despite seeing mm. the original, I did feel like this was a completely mm. fresh take and experience on it. You know, honestly, I actually worked with it as a source novel, the way you would work in an adaptation. Say you did like, you know, Pride and Prejudice or you did Hamlet. I mean, not that Elite is a classical text, but just the idea that you can take a line or even like the Mahabharata or Rama and you know these plot lines. Everybody knows the story. We know myth mythological stories. We know uh, Romeo and Juliet. These are stories that everybody knows. We know the ending. We know the beginning. And it's never bothered you because the telling is what it's about. It's not the story. And I was very clear that, and that's, I think, one of the things that comes up a lot. Oh, it's got the same plot points. I was like, I don't care. That's fine. Because the unfolding, the telling is going to be so different that even if you watched it, and I read a great review, an international review that said, actually, it really helped to have seen it. Because then you know the plot. You're not worried about who's who and what's happening. And you can immerse yourself in this Indian milieu. So I was very clear that, you know, people have seen uh, you know, euphoria, they've seen whatever, it's all the better because then that allows them an entry point into my world, which I think is neither of these things. It's kind of its own unique Indian take. And yet it's got a very international sensibility. And I, I have to say that if they, we didn't have streaming, we wouldn't have had audiences that have been would have been receptive to this. I mean, it would have been just people would have been scandalized and say, Ye kya hai yaar. It's, you know, it would have, we would have got that, that kind of reaction. I think streaming and the access has allowed people entry and they're all relieved. They're like, and I have kids thanking me, you know, like 
I've come out to my parents or I've not been able to come out to my parents. And this show has made them empathetic to even that conversation. You know, these conversations haven't happened. So I think that's been amazing. So my final question to you is, um, you know, that, that whole question of is the Indian audience ready has now somehow become redundant. Yeah. Because if you don't give them stuff, how will they ever be ready? It's only when you offer them something, will you be able to gauge, has this worked or has this not worked? What has been your, uh, just as a filmmaker and also as somebody who watches a lot of stuff himself, what has been your takeaway? Like I'm guessing with daddy and everything that you've done in the past, you've always had a takeaway once you hand it over to the audience. What has been your greatest learning mm. as a filmmaker with uh, class? See, you know, the funny thing is that I, I had a film in Cannes in 2012, which was about the C-grade film industry. And it had to be financed by French and Japanese producers. No Indian producer would touch it. Right. And that's 10 years ago. So I have a very interesting take on what's happened over the last 10 years, because my work has continuously been kind of in the same zone. But what's happened is the reception of it has changed suddenly from that film, which nobody could understand, or they had a very difficult time accessing. I made a daddy where people were still a little bit, oh, it's a bit fragmented. It's a bit edgy. You know, you can't someone mein aa hai, this, that. But there was still an openness. So that's halfway through this time. And now with class, suddenly there's this openness. So I don't think what's changing is me. I think what's changing is the environment. I think old Bollywood has just collapsed. Honestly, the old tentpole, other than, you know, obviously this like a scenario like Pathan, where it's very specific, but Otherwise, this the, the, the old system just doesn't exist anymore. And we don't know what Bollywood is anymore. Nobody knows. Uh, the older actors are getting, you know, they're sort of getting phased out. The younger lot is very interested and excited about world cinema. They don't even watch old Bollywood stuff. I mean, so, you know, we are in a very interesting time in terms of flux. And for a filmmaker like me, who sort of started at a point where I was a complete outsider, for now to have, you know, Traditional Bollywood producers calling me say, yeah, kuch kar le na, let's do something, yeah, do something, whatever you want to do, you do. It's kind of mind blowing. But I think that's because the audience has become exposed. And um, I can't like, you know, it's the it's the best thing that could have happened for us because we now will have stuff that at least represents different, you know, stories, different spaces. Otherwise, we just have the same stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So what's next for you? Because you keep keep us guessing. <laughs> If you go to your IMDb page, it's so different from what you've done before. That's a great sign and that's that's exciting for a filmmaker. What's next for you, Ashim? So, you know, obviously, um, I'm, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've really kind of exhausted this thing right now. Um, and I'm, I'm working on an international project. So I mean, I'm working on an international feature project, which is a, which is a sci-fi film. It's still in development, so I can't talk a lot about it, but it's the first time I'm making something that's completely English language and outside of India and with, with a, with an international cast. So that's quite exciting. I also have another film, which is, uh, you know, um, something I'm doing with two female leads, uh, big stars in India, but it's a very crazy film. Again, it's a little bit like my other work. It's quite wild, uh, but you know, it's a it's a thriller and it's a it's a real chick flick, and I think it's really fun. So these are the two things I'm currently focusing on, and you know, there's always things in development. And but you know, my thing is basically Tushar. I don't want to do the same thing twice. I'm just clear about that. I, I don't want to become repetitive. Like it excites me only when it's new. You know, so that's sort of where I'm at right now yeah you've trademarked the word new in that case which i think is damn exciting <laughs> for us as an audience but this That's was a lovely good. chat ashim we must catch up thank you so much you're back. yeah and yeah. all the very best for your next thank you all right cheers thanks thank a lot you. bye bye